Hello and welcome One Young World uh, Delegates. My name is Sahar Fetrat and I'm moderating tonight's uh, spotlight session on Afghanistan, the struggles for women's rights. Um, I already <laughs> introduced myself, I'm working as an um, uh, assistant researcher with Human Rights Watch. Uh, I'm actually a feminist and activist who grew up in Afghanistan and I'm very much thrilled to be joined uh, today by uh, my colleagues uh, Tamana Ayozi, uh, who's a National Geographic explorer and journalist and filmmaker. Um, Hila Yoon, uh, who's the founder of Afghan Youth Ambassador for Peace Organization. And last but not least, um, Ms. Hasina Sofi, former Minister of Women's, Ra Women's Affairs and Human Rights Activist. Thank you all for joining the session today. Um, in July 2022, UN uh, High Commissioner for Human Rights, Michelle, Michelle Bachelet, said that the Taliban takeover of Afghanistan and the current state of women's rights was the most significant and rapid rollback in enjoyments of uh, women's rights across the uh, Afghanistan in decades. Um, Hasina John, I'm going to start with you. How has the Taliban's uh, rule and takeover impacted the rights of women and girls in Afghanistan since last August? Thank you very much. Good evening to everyone. I would like to thank uh, the One Young World Summit uh, to have a session for Afghanistan. We really value it at this critical time. How did uh, the Taliban takeover uh, affect uh, our impact, the women, I think, from mobility to participation, uh, from uh, having small businesses to being in the decision-making positions, it has been erased. There is no address for the women of Afghanistan today in order to say and to highlight their issues at the very critical and very grassroots level to the policy level. So on the whole, we can say that whatever investment had been done in the last 20 years has been frozen in the last one year. Thus, as a women's rights activist who started her struggle at the age of 15, I urge all of you, don't take life granted. It's a world of challenges, but it's a world of hope stand with the women of Afghanistan, whether it is education, health, participation. Today it's Afghanistan, tomorrow it can be yourself. Stand for humanity, stand for the women of Afghanistan. The situation is... The situation is deteriorating day by day, but today, it is a minute of hope that you yourself value your valuable time to listen to us and we, the youth of Afghanistan, stand to invest whatever they have gained in the last 20 years. Thank you. Thank you, Hasina, for the very um, significant message. Um, Hila, I'll go to you. Um, you are the founder of the Afghan Youth Ambassadors for Peace organization. And uh, through your organization, you have been aiming to create a peaceful and just Afghanistan. Um, I'd like to know how, how has um, the Taliban's presence affected your organization and the work that your organization is supposed to, or uh, it was um, performing in Afghanistan to bring um, 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 women and youth uh, in decision making? Uh, how has uh, Taliban's presence affected uh, all that your organization has been achieving? Um, thank you, Sarjan. Hi, everyone. Um, when I started my organization, I was just 20 years old, and um, the whole focus was to localize peace building in local communities, because I grew up in Afghanistan, and I'm from a, a province where the focus of a lot of NGOs was not there. Most of the NGOs in Afghanistan were just focused in Kabul, or INGOs were just focusing on big provinces, but just excluding the other provinces at all. 
when I started my organization, I was trying to focus a lot, like how we can make this youth centered and how we can localize uh, peace building in local communities. We, can, we implemented a lot of community peace build dialogues with religious leaders, tribal leaders, because we believe that engaging all the stakeholders in every decision-making processes is that's when we actually can build sustainable peace in countries like Afghanistan. At the moment, our, organ our activities and advocacy have take a pause because of the current security situation. We cannot like do everything uh, openly, but we're still doing humanitarian work and we're trying to do our humanitarian work from um, gender lenses. Because for us, peace doesn't mean the end of war just because we are not having terrorist attacks or bomb blasts. It's not peace for Afghans. For us, peace means that Afghan girl having access to education, Afghan women having access to their basic rights. And that's what our organization is still trying to advocate for, to have a positive and sustainable peace in our country, not just the absence of war. Thank you. Thank you, Hila. It's, the situation is indeed um, very unfortunate. And um, in 2022, um, Afghanistan is the only country where girls cannot go to secondary school and get education. Um, Tamana, uh, as a young Afghan filmmaker, you've been documenting the situation of Afghan women and girls, and you've been documenting the evolution of the situation. How do you find the situation of Afghan women and girls right now, and how do you see the situation of human rights uh, overall in Afghanistan? Um, as someone who was born in Afghanistan, raised, worked, and studied, um, and was able to use at least some of the opportunities available in the past 20 years, uh, it's heartbreaking for me. And it's really sad to see Afghanistan back in this situation. And it's getting worse every day. So I'm trying through my work to highlight whatever is happening in Afghanistan, no matter if it's through writing articles, doing research, or making documentary films. Um, I believe in the power of storytelling, and I believe that if we sit somewhere and ignore that this is happening to Afghanistan, it will not go away. And it breaks my heart to see little kids asking uh, to be able to go to secondary school, but they cannot do it. And I remember when I was a child, something similar to this happened to me. I was not able to go to school until I was eight years old, just because Taliban were in power at that time. And I see that same thing is happening to girls in my country. Um, so yeah, I, 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 I have a strong belief that we need to work towards this. And we cannot do it alone. Uh, we can do some, but if we come together, we can do something to change the situation in Afghanistan collectively. And all those women going out on the streets in Afghanistan uh, are fighting for our rights. It's not only for themselves, it's for the future of us, future generations. It's not only for Afghanistan, it's for the world. And we need to cover all these things. Yes, and once again, indeed, um, there is a lot of courage in women in Afghanistan who are fighting uh, in the streets and for the rights of everyone, asking for their rights for um, bread, freedom, and work. And uh, yes, and we, we are here uh, uh, to celebrate their courage, and we are definitely very much grateful to them. Um, I'm going back to you, Hasina John. We keep talking about the the this uh, women's rights crisis, human rights crisis, and um, it's indeed ha heartbreaking. What can we do? What do you think that people who are listening to us here today, what can they do when they go back to their home countries or home societies? How can they advocate for the rights of Afghan women and girls? Thank you very much for the very relevant and required uh, question. I think the first thing we can do as individuals, including ourselves, just decide for one small thing which you can do for the women of Afghanistan, for the children of Afghanistan, and follow that up. How will you follow it? Within your own capacity, as an activist, as a government employee, as a non-government employee, as a business holder, just whatever you do, think about what kind of a critical situation do the women and children of Afghanistan are passing through now, in what can you do? As an individual, you measure that. And then, 
as someone who can ha who has done advocacy you can do advocacy within your na nations within your governments at policy level not to forget the women not to forget the people and the children of afghanistan so i would just give three specific recommendations the first recommendation is that presently with all the poverty with all the flood with the covid and everything how much access of the humanitarian aid which is collected from your taxes is getting access to the women of afghanistan to the widows of afghanistan as a war as a war for the last 40 years to the female headed households of afghanistan just remember that the second thing with the education if girls don't go to Egypt, they to school it means they are buried alive education is the key to success education is open an eye opener education is knowing yourself as a human and how to support in the midterm we have to really put pressure on our governments to stand with the people of afghanistan to put pressure on taliban to start school and help the doctors in afghanistan in the long run what is the international vision for the people of afghanistan do afghan lives do afghan women lives do afghan children's wishes matter to them yes they do they are as equal as a child in uk as equal as a child in us in australia in canada what can you do stand with them and define your vision for the public for the people of afghanistan for the women of afghanistan and for the children of afghanistan to cut it short what is the indicator as a nation which your country thinks in order to help the people of afghanistan after 20 years of investment starting from the grassroots to the cabinet to the decision making positions today our neighbors are announcing their pilots female pilots our country had female pilots our country had female judges our country had female police our country had female ministers how are you supporting them as human rights activists please remember and coordinate with your governments to define their support through a vision with the people of Afghanistan. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Hila, can I have your uh, message shortly? Um, I think Asina John covered most of the things that um, we wanted to recommend. But one thing I would recommend for young people, because I know a lot of you came from different countries and you have been working in um, this platform or this field for a long time. The first thing I would recommend is to build your knowledge about what's happening in Afghanistan. I see so many people in these countries or different activists, they don't really know what's happening in Afghanistan. They're not up to date. I would recommend like, please follow up, read the news, read the new reports. I know what is actually happening in Afghanistan and what solution and what recommendation INGOs and local NGOs are asking us to provide for them. The second thing is, I know there's, there's humanitarian um, support is going to Afghanistan, but we also need to know that there is a banking crisis in Afghanistan right now and not a lot of money is going to Afghanistan. We should focus more on how we can solve the current banking crisis because it's related to so many humanitarian uh, problems at the moment. But if you cannot do that, at, do fundraising at your school, at your community for Afghan people, for Afghan children, because Afghanistan has a humanitarian crisis at the moment and so many people are dying because of climate change. And this is what we can do at the moment. But also with a lot of uh, young people who are, came from different countries, many Afghan became refugees in your country at the moment. Please connect with them, go to your refugee center, connect with them, talk to them. We have so many talented Afghan, but just because of war, just because of the current situation, they left the country. Use their resources, use their knowledge to build and bring changes even in your countries and in your communities and how we can give and take um, uh, help and support to each other. So that would be my recommendation for people who came from abroad and also people who are still living in UK.
Thank you, Hila, and thank you for mentioning the refugees. I think that's a very uh, important message you sent, uh, and I hope the people who hear us um, do extend kindness to uh, refugees from everywhere, and also Afghan refugees who have lost their country. Um, Tamana, as, as a, storyteller, a, a storyteller and as a filmmaker, um, what is your message? How do you want to convey your message to the people in this room? <laughs> As I always say, I don't want to stick to being only a journalist and filmmaker. I'm also a human, a woman. Uh, so I have a broader, a broader message. I would say that don't forget Afghans who are still in Afghanistan. Um, and there is a lot of humanitarian crisis beside all the restrictions happening by the Taliban. And also do not forget the ones who left Afghanistan, uh, because I'm one of them. And I know how it feels to be in a different country and start life from from almost nothing. Um, and also another message I have is like, whatever you can do, as small as if you're working in health sector, if you can offer something, please do that. If you are working in education sector and you're able to do something, introduce the platform, connect with the ones still in Afghanistan. I'm sure there are still some NGOs, I'm in touch with them. If you need contacts or anything else and interested to collaborate with them, I'm more than happy to connect you with them. And also, uh, I really want everyone who is here today, uh, when, when they go back to their countries, uh, they need to, it would be nice to advocate for Afghanistan and ask your government, your leaders, to uh, put pressure on the Taliban uh, so we find a solution for all the miseries happening in Afghanistan today. <clears throat> Thank you all so much. Thank you for the uh, very much heartfelt conversation. Um, um, I, I would just add that um, if, uh, because we started this session talking about uh, the struggles of uh, women and women's rights, I wanted to say that um, Afghan women are definitely struggling a lot right now, the ones who are in the country, and they're the ones who are actually fighting back. And um, if... Uh, in my view, if uh, resistance and uh, uh, fighting back and courage had an address in Afghanistan, that would definitely be women of Afghanistan. And uh, with that, uh, we're closing this session. Thank you so much for joining us. On behalf of One Young World, I thank you all, and thank you for being a part of this community. And let us all stand in support of the women of Afghanistan. Amazing, courageous leaders. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much. Thank you.